story time. Today's video is quite interesting. So if you remember four days ago, I asked some of you what video or videos would you like me to make and see as upcoming videos. I was scrolling through some of the comments and then a few people said, what about a storytelling ASMR? So we're there today. Got the fresh trim. Add me on Snapchat, Keegan2490. Add me on Instagram. Use the name of YouTube all in the description. So without further ado, let's go back all the way to 2020. Arguably one of the strangest years as humans do live in. At COVID-19, that was such a weird year, like 2019, 2020. I look back at it now and it's like, what a strange year it was. But again, also what a enjoyable year that was when it came to like the lockdown and the peace and everything that you had and that came with it. It was the summer of 2020. I think it was actually July, August, but I'm pretty sure if I can consider and remember it correct. It was in July. I just finished high school, got everything done, was super happy, and I was free, free of school pretty much, and I was like, damn, what am I going to do with this vacation? Now, it had just happened to be that my family, so my mom, dad, and my sister, was our grandmother living with us at the time. No, I think she only came in 2021. But they happened to go on a trip to a place called Pixeberge in North Brabant. And my dad had happened to leave the Jeep keys behind. So in the back of my mind, I was thinking, if he leaves those keys behind, I'm joyriding in his whip, 100%. When they told me that they're gone for a week, I'm like, if something is up there reading this, please, for the love of God, give me that one chance of a lifetime of driving in a car without a license. Why I did it, I'll get into that just now. So, they left, and immediately what I did is I grabbed the Jeep keys, and I posted it on my Snapchat saying, yep, you know what it is, parents are gone for a week. The car is all to mine and people said, uh, but like, you don't have a license. Indeed, I don't have a license, not at the time. So, what did I do the entire week that they were gone? Not the, quite obvious. I got them drove I felt like, took the dogs out to the forest. Was I nervous? Yes, the first, like, couple of times I was shitting bricks pretty much, because, yeah, bear in mind, I lived in, 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 in the city, so a police, like, can pop up anywhere not necessarily on the cover, but more like police and vans. But I felt like, you know, if I get caught, then I get caught. It is what it is, right? And I've done some stupid stuff in my life, but th this is arguably one of the dumbest things I ever did. So, that entire week, I decided to go to different places, take a friend with as well, and she said, Keegan, I don't think this is smart. I got a license, but you don't have a license. I said, well, if we get pulled over, we get pulled over. But, you know, the adrenaline rush that I got every time from getting in that car, driving late nights, it was just an awesome experience. So that entire week went perfect. I remember one night, I tried to thank the Jeep, and I couldn't get the tank thing open. I'm like, for God's sakes. There happened to be these two girls at like one in the morning at the tank station on the scooter, and I asked them, could you like help me open the thing? And they couldn't figure it out neither. So then I thought, all right, screw it. <laughs> Whatever it is, what it is. Parents come back. And um, I went to the tank station just before they came back. And my dad found out that I had driven the car. Because just before he left, he remembered the uh, amount of mileage I drove. But also, the biggest thing was, I had a receipt under the, the seat. I completely forgot about it. It must have fallen under. So he said, listen, I'm not mad. I knew you drove the car. I said, how'd you know? Well, first of all, the mileage has increased. Second of all, your stupid ass left the goddamn receipt under the seat. I said, oh, you're like not mad. No, I don't really care, honestly, dude. As long as you just don't do it again. You know, I said, okay, cool. So they were back at the time. And this is where I made the big mistake of how I ended up getting pulled over. I had to spend a, an hour in a little holding cell. We're getting at that just now. It was a Monday morning. Can we go 
God damn, it was what? It was 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. I was just waiting for my dad to go to sleep. I think he had work the next day. Or maybe not. I don't know. So, you know, I'm contemplating, like, do I really go take the Jeep now? What if I start the car? You know, a cold start V6. Anyone can hear it in the neighborhood. So I'm like, shit, do I do it or not? I do it anyways. I'm like, no goddamn way, they didn't hear me. So I drive. Decided to go to the McDonald's and treat myself with some uh, vegetarian food. I was still vegetarian at the time. I cannot believe this is uh, more than three years ago already. Crazy. Time flies, doesn't it? So I was done eating food. And I thought, let's drive a little bit more around town. Now this is where I made the mistake. And I'll get into that just now. This is how it happened. You see. I was driving around in this rich area, in like a rich part of town, with like these mansions and everything, so I was driving around in circles there at like 1 in the morning, like 1.30, and you can imagine that, you know, people will think it's suspicious a car driving in circles around the house at the different time at that time of the night, so yeah, if the cops got caught on me, I don't know, but the cops told me eventually when they pulled me over that they were following me the entire time when I was there. So, I leave that, like, the wealthy area, right? And there uh, was an intersection. I go right, and just as before as I go right, I see in front of me, I see a cop car. So I'm like, oh shit. No, don't say it, Andrew. I'm already like, oh, oh. But I thought, you know, let's just stay calm. May nothing happen at all. So I'm thinking in the back of my mind, if I do it right now, Please don't turn as well. Like, just please, please do not turn. I turn, and yes. Guess what happened? They turn as well. So I'm like, oh no. Like, I was like, no, I've been caught. 100%. This, this, no, this is too coincidental. Like, how? They were flashing me from, from the back. So I thought, screwed. I'm pedaling this car. I'm speeding off. I swear to God. <laughs> this is so stupid, but I did it. I was speeding off and I went to this neighborhood, Morian Soer. It's a 50 road ride. I drove 90 through that whole entire thing at the roundabout where I eventually thought, nah, this car is too slow, man. So I pulled over. They had their sirens on, you know, like the flashes, not like the noise, but like the flashes on. So I thought, okay, I I'm done, I'm screwed. I might as well just tell them the truth when they pulled me over. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember very much of the conversation because it's three years ago. But let me just tell you, I was caught and caught badly as well. Quite embarrassing, to be frank, down with you. Two officers stepped out of the car, asked me a bunch of questions, said, Do you have a license? Because he looked at me and he probably thought, Man, he's way too young to have a license. I said, No, I'll be honest, uh, I don't have a license. Well, whose car is this? It's my dad's. Does he know you're driving it right now? At like 2 in the morning, I said, no, he, he doesn't know. Where is he right now? He's asleep with his wife. I said, what's all this stuff in the back? I said, oh, that's uh, stuff from my dad's, like, I don't like a little hobby at the time. I don't really remember what was in the back, but like a lot of tools and stuff like that. And um, from there upon, I was like, God damn it, just don't call my parents. So they said, can you phone your parents? I'm like, no. So I had to call my parents at like 2, 2, 30 in the morning and explain the entire situation so you can understand from my mom's perspective. Yeah, let's just say she wasn't very happy because of the fact that I had woken her from her sleep and she didn't expect her son to do such a... Um, why do you say it? Such a dumb stunt. You know, you all live and learn. Did I learn from this? Yes, definitely. <laughs> was it fun? Yeah, it was fun until I got caught. So yeah, that kind of happened. So my dad came out with the car and uh, the whole story gets explained and then he said, listen, we're gonna take him to the, um, to, what, to the station for some information, this and this and that. So my dad goes back home pretty much and now it's like th three in the morning. They take me to the station and it's like quiet, there's nobody there. 
I get put in this, like, like I obviously get checked first, you know, that I don't have a knife or anything on me, legal-wise, so I get put in this holding cell. I had to take my, I had to give my phone to them, but I had happened to have, like, a little ball in my pocket for some reason. I don't know why, and I just threw the ball up and down against the ceiling and stuff like that. Like, the holding cell was super tiny, and it was quite scary because of the fact that there's, like, no window, like, a little, like, like, I was like, Jesus, can't imagine actually having to be in jail for stuff doing like that. I think 35, 45 minutes pass away, opened up the door and he said, listen, this is what we're going to do. Considering you've been very honest and open to us from the start, you don't have no criminal history, background, nothing pops up. Let this be a lesson for you. We're not going to charge you with anything. You're not going to get no fine. You don't have to go to uh, court, nothing. He said, look, I understand, it's Corona still, and you're eager to want to drive, I fully get it. But you must understand, without having, with having no license means you're not insured if anything does happen in a way. What happens next time, or what, hap what would have happened if you took someone's life away in a car? And that's when I stood still and thought, he's, he's got a very good point. So they let me go very, they let me go off very easy. I think, like I said, the reason why is because of the fact that I was just very honest from the get-go. I didn't lie to them. I just admitted, like, listen, what I did was very stupid. You know, you live once, but it obviously could have gone very wrong as well. Now, why it could have gone wrong? Because I had little to no experience. I was still driving at the driving school. And yes, they heard about it as well. And they didn't drop me, which was very nice. Yeah, I was very fortunate. They said as well, very stupid of you, Keegan. It could have gone very, very wrong. I look back at it now, would I do it again? Of course not. I mean, I've got my license now. Yeah, I've had my license for almost a year. I got it this year, uh, 14th of January. I drove off, and I think I was able to pick it up on the 21st of January and then like no, the 20th and then the 21st I picked my car up the master that I drive yes and the rest of their opponent's history now kids if you're going to do something illegal like that make sure that you just don't get caught goddamn embarrassment I, you know back then like three years ago I thought it was funny but then I look back now because I've become much older I, I look at it like what if it did go wrong? Like I said, it could have easily gone wrong and it luckily, thank God for that, didn't go wrong. I never got into a crash. Well, actually, that's not true. I forgot to mention it. Let me tell you something. It's not relevant at all by any meaning to edit the story, but I think I'll tell you anyway. So when my parents were still gone for their week ride, I came home the wrong night. W home the one night. It was also like, I don't know, 12 o'clock, 1 in the morning or something like that. I tried to park on the uh, on our on our property right. My dumbass went too far, hit the door, broke the glass of the door, and I don't know what happened. But the engine just switched off, and the car rolled back. And I'm like, oh shit! If I don't stop this goddamn car, it's gonna hit the neighbor's car across the street. So I, I stopped it, went to the to my neighbor. I said, hey, listen, I tried to park the car uh, on our property. I kind of messed up. Oh, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. So he helped me sort the car, park it for me, and then he went back inside, and I had to sweep up all the glass. And then, like, an hour or something, I was duct taping it, cleaning it. Pretty much what we did was, we just pretty much, well, I won't admit what we did, for legal reasons, because that was also not very honest of us, but, you know, if you pay that much money for insurance, you might as well just try and make up some dumb story, I guess. Yeah, let me say it anyways. We, we, we told the insurance that, you know, oh, the hard wind door smacked against the, f the, 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 the wall, and then it just broke, but that wasn't really what happened. I drove against the door. Keegan, no Keegan, right? I know, that is the time of how I got, I don't want to even say arrested, but it sounds more intriguing if I just say the time I got pulled over by cops, or maybe arrested, I'll think of the title. 
that is today's story time. I can really think of another story. It's still yet again kind of bizarre to think of the fact that this was three years ago already. Like, what was it? Yeah, this is nearly three and a half years old. Wow. Crazy, crazy. Time goes fast. By the way, what do you guys think of my haircut? I honestly think it suits me a lot, this haircut. Uh, I do love the girl. Don't get it twisted. The girls are definitely what make me. I, I guess make me. They look nice. And if you've been wondering why I'm still here, like three weeks later recording in here, uh, my dad is still busy with painting and doing everything in my bedroom. It's just unfortunately the fact that uh, he's sick at the moment. I've actually been sick for like two weeks pretty much. Still not completely over, but we don't give a damn. You know why? Because we're going to go party later tonight with the boys. Yes, sir. It's been two weeks because I was sick last week. Got a match someday as well, but going to have to see if that match continues because we, sh we don't have enough guys for the, the game. But yeah, anyways, that was today's story time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you with the next ASMR probably at Edie McDonald.